Welcome back everyone to the Code Long series on creating a chat application. In the previous video, we connected our registration form to a database. In this video, we will go over some of the code we had written in the previous video and use custom validators from WT Forms to clean up the code. We'll be working with our existing code that we wrote for Flask WT Forms. If you're not sure of some of the code, you can always go back and watch the video on Flask WT Forms. That would be part 3 of the video series and you can find it in the description below. In this video, we'll be specifically talking about validators. We have used inbuilt validators like input required, length and equal to. If these were the only validators that we could use, this extension would have very limited use. What we will do is look at an example of how we can add a custom validator to this. This is a fairly basic example of inline validators. If you wish to see a more detailed video on the subject, please leave a comment below. Let's look at the username attribute for registration form class. It uses two inbuilt validators. It uses input required and it uses length. Now, what if we also want to add a third validator which checks whether the username already exists in the database? How do we do this? It's simple. We add a custom validator by writing a function that checks for the error we want to catch. There are two ways in which we can do this. In this video for registration page, we will go through the first method of doing this using inline validators. In the next video for login page, we will go through the other method, the second method of creating custom validators. So for custom validators in the first approach, we have to give this function a very specific name. It has to be validate underscore and the name of the field. Since we want to run this custom validator on the username field, we put username. This function has two parameters, self and the name of the field, which is username. Here we write whatever is the validation check we want to perform. In this particular example, we want to check whether the username is duplicate and we will be using SQL Alchemy for this. Now for those of you who are looking at this video in isolation, you can ignore the specifics of how we find the duplicate name and the SQL Alchemy syntax that is used. All you need to know is whatever is the check that you want the function to perform, this is where you can enter it. Okay, with that, let's jump right into this example. To determine whether the user is trying to register a username that already exists in the database, we query the database to see if someone has already taken that username. We have gone through the SQL Alchemy syntax in the previous video. In case you want to review it, just go to the description below and refer to part 5 of this series. Let's get a user object. By querying our database, we want to filter the results by any value in the username column that matches the value entered by the user in the form. So the syntax we saw it in the previous video is the name of the field, which is username dot data. This will be whatever is the value the user has entered in the registration page. And we just want the first value. If the username already exists, this will return the user object. Otherwise, the value returned will be none. So if the value is not none, that is if the user object was returned, that means the username already exists. So we raise a validation error. Validation error is an inbuilt function and it is something we have to import. So let's import it. We can pass in custom error message for this. So in case the username is duplicate, let's tell the user username already exists. Select a different username. Okay, before we can test this, let's go and remove the duplicate username validator that we had written in application.py. These are the lines that we need to get rid of. We have already added this in the other file, so we don't need to check for a duplicate username again. Okay, let's save this file and go back to the other file. Okay, there is one thing that is missing here. One more thing we need to do before we can test it. Can you see what's missing? That's right, you're using the user class right here. But this file has no way of knowing what that is. So where does this user class come from? If you recollect, we had defined this class in a file called models.py. So let's open the file. So this file right here, this is where we defined what a user would be. 
So in order for this WT fields file to get access to the user class defined in the models.py file, we need to import it here. Great, let's go test this file. I'm inside the folder that we created for this application and I have activated the virtual environment. I'm gonna start the server. Let's copy the URL and paste it here. Let's register a user, user3, and password is test, and so is the confirmation password. Create. What is it saying? This is in line 22 of application.py. Okay, so I accidentally put in an extra S. Let's refresh the page. Continue submitting the form. Data has been entered into the database. Now to test whether our duplicate username check does work, let's try and register the same user again. So I'm going to use username3. The password doesn't matter. It does throw a validation error up front. This custom validator function that we had written, it does work. Let's commit the changes. So there are two files which we need to stage for committing. And let's commit them. Update registration form duplicate username checker. So that is how we use a custom validator in a file. In the next video, we will build on the work we have done so far and we will start working on the login form. So be sure to check that out. And as always, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.